today's video, we're gonna run through the five signs that your retirement plan won't last past 70. I've been a certified financial planner for over a decade, and these are the signs I see day in and day out after thousands of hours of consultations. The truth is most people out there have not been educated about these five signs because they're not often talked about on the internet. But that's exactly what I'm gonna talk about today. Not only am I gonna cover what these five things are, but I'm also gonna show you how to mitigate these in your own life so that your retirement is not cut short. So let's get into the video. By number one, debt repayments. You've heard the old saying that not all debt is bad debt, and that's true. However, some people have a habit of having bad debt going into retirement. Of course, it's okay to have a mortgage or a car payment. However, sometimes these things can get out of control, and as financial planners, we're trained to ask questions to try to figure out if there's a one-time situation like a medical bill or if this is the type of thing where you're constantly financing things like furniture at 11% and refinancing the house over and over again. It's always been weird to me that people who are within, say, five years of retirement, sometimes they tend to rack up a bunch of debt subconsciously. I think they're trying to you know, get it all in or something, but we really have to pay attention to that. Now, this may not be you. You may not have a problem with debt, but before I go into the second sign, let me tell you what we tell people privately when we see this type of behavior. So if you're trying to get rid of this behavior before you retire, three simple things. First, go to dinkytown.net, look for the snowball debt elimination calculator, put all your information in there, all your debts and hit calculate. Second, figure out how much you can increase that payment per month so that you can speed up that exact day that you're going to be out of debt. The beauty of doing this is that once you are out of debt, you're gonna have this extra cash flow that you've proven to yourself that you can live without or put back into your plan. Third, put that monthly payment on auto payment. It never ceases to amaze me the power of automation, especially when it comes to 401ks. Many people have more money than they ever imagined because they automatically put money into their 401ks over the years. The same thing's true of paying off debt. Set that thing up so you don't forget it, and it's a trick that's worked to help a lot of people. Sign to aggressive withdrawal strategies. Aggressive withdrawal strategies means that you're spending a high percentage of your total assets every single year. So if you are pulling $100,000 a year out of a million-dollar portfolio, that's a 10% withdrawal rate. Now, the popular entertainer, Dave Ramsey, promotes an 8 to 10% withdrawal rate, but almost every academic says that that is a crazy withdrawal amount to sustain for the long term. So a high withdrawal rate puts you at risk because of negative sequences of returns. Sure, you may be targeting 8% per year, but you're not going to get that every year. You're going to have some really high years. You're going to have some low years. You're going to have some negative years. And the sequences in which that happens can go sideways really quickly. So I always tell people to choose Use their withdrawal strategy. And there are several, I'm just going to throw some names out here. You have inflation adjusted. You have the 4% rule. You have the bucket strategy. You have spending stages strategy. You have the spending smile strategy. You have the floor and ceiling strategy. You have guardrails and you have risk-based guardrails, not to be confused with regular guardrails. There are a lot of different names and several strategies. This is a very important decision. My favorite is a risk-based guardrails with a retirement spending smile, which means that you try to match what real retirement spending actually looks like rather than assuming that it just goes up, up, up over the years. In my opinion, risk-based guardrails is absolutely the best withdrawal strategy because instead of going too aggressive, it can monitor monitor your steady monthly income and let you know when it's okay to spend more or when a slight cutback would be required to still reach your goals. They can also let you know if you're in retirement and we go through a drawdown period, whether or not it's required for you to reduce your spending or not. And without that type of strategy, a person may be tempted to automatically spend less when maybe they don't really need to. Trust me, you don't wanna be the person going into retirement and having an overly aggressive withdrawal strategy. Sign three is portfolio allocation. It's very common for people to say, I don't know what my allocation is I just chose a fund. And your fund that you chose probably has a good allocation. However, is it the right allocation for you? And how does it play into your other accounts? Because most people have more than one account. So how is that allocation interplaying with the other things that you own? See, a diversified allocation is careful to not have too much of one thing. It's very popular to have a lot of technology or communications. And that can be great for a while, 
but what about the long term and what about the volatility? And people who do not pay attention to their allocation tend to drift into a suboptimal allocation because most of us have funds and those funds are inside of 401ks and we tend to uh, own the S&P 500. And as great as the S&P 500 is, it is a market cap weighted index, which means that the biggest companies are going to dominate that index. When those companies are doing well, all is good, but when they're not, there can be severe volatility and swings. Now, this is very important to know, and that is your allocation can help reduce your volatility or your standard deviation. Swings can be reduced by diversification, and rebalancing. One reason that having a proper allocation can make a big difference is that there may be an emphasis on dividends over growth. Dividends are going to be putting cash back into that portfolio four times a year. That's going to help uh, improve some things and reduce that, that volatility many times, whereas growth focus may not be putting those dividends back into that portfolio as often. And so therefore investing in that growth could make it be more volatile for you. As someone nearing retirement, not keeping up with allocation or rebalancing can be very risky during a downturn, especially if that portfolio is generating limited income and dividends. So here's what you can do. Make sure you have some methodology to your allocation and that you rebalance at regular intervals and you have the courage to rebalance. And I say it takes courage because to rebalance your portfolio, you have to sell the winners and buy some of the stuff that didn't perform as well. That's very counterintuitive. And it can be frustrating because diversification, one advisor referred to it as defrustification because it's frustrating because you're purchasing this stuff that didn't do so well when maybe last year large cap growth did really well and you also own real estate and small cap value. However, if you rebalance and focus on your allocation, you're constantly mitigating those risks over time. All right, sign four that your retirement won't last is no emergency fund. A very common situation that we find when somebody retires is that they have 100% of their money in traditional IRAs or 401ks, and they have no money in non-qualified accounts. And what that means is that they're not IRS tax qualified, which means they're just not a, I, a traditional IRA or a 401k. You have to pay taxes or have a penalty if you try to pull that money out. And so this can be a real problem when you need to access cash. You wanna be able to protect yourself from the unexpected and take advantage of opportunities that present themselves, but you don't wanna be forced to pay penalties or take pay taxes to do that. Last year, one of our clients, Sherry, found a ideal retirement home that she wanted to downsize or right size her home. And she was able to use part of her emergency cash to secure that property over the competition. And it turns out that it was just the most perfect house for her. If she didn't have that money sitting there, she would have had to take money out of her IRA and pay taxes on that. So if you're still a few years away from retirement, there's still time to plan to have that money setting aside. And I'll give you a couple of steps to do that. All right, here's how I like to do it. We like to have six months withdrawal from your portfolio. So if you're going to withdraw $4,000 per month from your portfolio, in addition to your social security and other stuff coming in, then we would just take $4,000 times six, and that means that your emergency savings would be about $24,000. We'd put that into an FDIC insured account so it's always there and available. So if you're three years from retirement, you'd simply wanna take that $24,000 and divide it by 36 months, and then start to save that money on a monthly basis so that you arrive with the right amount when you stop working. Now, don't include things like remodeling your kitchen in this number. That needs to be a separate project. So if you're gonna do some big purchases at the point of retirement, don't figure on that coming out of your emergency savings money. There's a lot of emotional benefit to having money that's not in an IRA, that's sitting in cash when you stop working, or at least it's sitting in a non-qualified account where there's not as much of a tax impact for taking that money out. And you wanna refill that emergency bucket when it gets low, and there's a couple of ways that you can do that. We like to look for opportunities to harvest it from your other accounts, meaning if you're not underspending and you don't have extra cash flow coming in, you're gonna to have to find that money from somewhere. And so there's two opportunities usually where you can either find tax losses or tax gains in some of your other accounts, sell those, have somewhat of a tax advantage, and then refill that bucket. The other way you can do it is you can advance your income early by finding that you're in, let's just say the 22% tax bracket, you could actually see if there's room in that tax bracket. And then we could just take that out of that IRA account, let's say, 
put it into your emergency savings so that in a future year, you're not forced into a higher tax bracket because you need some type of emergency money coming out at a higher tax rate. All right, sign number five that your retirement may not last is ignoring healthcare costs. And this is gonna be in a couple of different areas. You see, we need to take action in three key areas. Area number one, how you prepare for healthcare before you retire. Area number two, how you're budgeting for your healthcare during retirement. And three, how you're taking care of long-term healthcare needs, extended healthcare needs. All three of these areas, we can take some action on before we retire. So preparing for area one is you can contribute to that HSA account if you have it. If you're going to have a gap between the time you stop working in Medicare, you can start saving some cash for that. Okay, so preparing for area two, I'll, I'll refer to a study by T. Rowe Price, and it talks about there being two areas that you can budget for in retirement for healthcare. The first one is your normal Medicare premium, and the other one is your out-of-pocket costs. And the good news about that is your premium is predictable, so that can be inside of your financial story, your financial narrative, and then the out-of-pocket costs can be estimated. So for example, we can just look at a chart, we can take that number and get ourselves in the 75 percentile or the 90th percentile of what the out-of-pocket costs are going to be, could be, and we can budget that into the plan. Area three is preparing for those extended healthcare crises and needs, and that's a more involved topic around long-term healthcare. Following this video, you'll know exactly what you need to do to avoid these key five signs that can cut a retirement short. You can now analyze your own situation to see if these signs are present in your own life so that you can begin to fix them. However, if you wanna ensure that you have a stress-free, long-lived retirement, there are multiple other factors that I couldn't cover in this short of a video. So if you're interested in having a team of professionals look at your situation and build out that plan so that you can have that long-lived, stress-free retirement, Click the link in the description for a no-cost consultation. See you in the next video.